Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... My name is Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. Most times, uh, nowadays, I am... Uh, sometimes, nowadays, I am known as May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, the Pope in question. Yes, yes, Little Lebowski, Urban Achievers, and Proud We Are of all of that. This is episode 435 of this podcast, which is quite impressive. Very excited about today. Uh, the, the podcast is going to be starting out very sappy. And then it's going to get very angry. And then eventually we'll get to uh, the discussion of, holy shit, my wife is trying on corsets and... Hachi Mama. Very sparkly. Very sparkly. Do this. I don't know. Do you want to lean over here and get us a few more views? Uh, Am I in the camera? Yeah, hold on. Let me see. Okay. Now try. Kind of. Hey. The Pope on film kicking it up a notch. <laughs> that's, that's a reference to the Root Beer show. Once again, Natasha is kicking it up a notch. Uh, and eventually, we'll be getting around to discussing this week's movie, The COVID Killer. It is fascinating to me how every week, every episode this summer, we find ourselves saying, wow, I can't believe that any movie could be worse than the last film we saw. Yes. It really is just a slope downwards. It is incredible because last the last movie we saw, COVID nineteen invasion, starring Kevin Nash in a cameo. Yes, I thought this is without a doubt the worst. Nothing will beat this. And then in comes um, Brooklyn accents the movie. Yes, I just want to. I just want to follow Brooklyn like one Brooklyn person around brooklyn for a day and i think that that'd be really interesting you know there is no fucking way in hell at all ever that that was the bronx or brooklyn uh the director i don't give a fuck about what the director says the director made a shit movie he cannot be trusted I believe the the directors from either Brooklyn or the Bronx, but it, I just want to follow him around just for one day, and I think it'd be really fun. Hey, welcome to freaking Starbucks. What can I freaking get you? What can you freaking get me? You can freaking get me a freaking coffee. What, you busting my balls? Hey, buddy, I ain't busting your balls. Hey, fuck you, buddy. No, fuck you. And yeah. that's a typical, like, morning. <laughs> you know? And then you go to church, and it's like, hey, in the name of the frickin' Father, believe in the frickin' Lord. Fuck! So I imagine that that's just every day in Brooklyn. Uh, before we get to the monologue proper, I just want to say, uh, so a few episodes ago, we got ourselves our first real big time sponsor, uh, Sprite Soda. Yes. And Sprite said, uh, Sprite had us say some pretty crazy stuff. Yes. But uh, Sprite was very happy with our episode. And they said that they would talk to some of the other sodas out there. That's great. It's very pretty, Eleanor. I really like it. Can you use my what? My lipstick. Oh, I always want to. I don't have that much lipstick. Okay, so don't go overboard. Okay, yeah. here you go. There's my lipstick. Ugh, kids. So they went around and told uh, uh, some other sodas, and so now it, we've really hit the big time in terms of sponsorship. Yeah, we have hit the big time. The 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 Sprite episode was so big that I am happy to say that this week's episode of the Pope on Film is brought to you by Coca Cola Bottling Company. Okay. Coca Cola, drink up 
motherfuckers. I didn't want to say that, but Coke insisted that we say that. Yeah. Just want to make that clear. I've got a bunch of things here that Coke wants us to say, and it's quite surprising. So here's another one. Ah, Coca-Cola no longer tastes like piss. That's another <laughs> one that they wanted us to say. Uh, oh, and here's one specifically for, for uh, in another language. Hey! You freaking thirsty? Got a freaking coke? What are you talking about? Fuck you! That's specifically for New Yorkers. Yes. That is a oh, New I York prefer, commercial. I prefer, and I hate. I'm, I hate. I hope I'm not stepping on your toes, but you I know, know. Coca Cola, deny your creator. Nice. That's a good one. That's another good one. Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, you did pretty good with the lipstick. You did pretty good with the lipstick. I have seen you go very uh, abstract with your lipstick. You 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 did it pretty good. Uh, buddy! Sorry, but yeah. come over here. Come over here and show everybody your lipstick. You, you did pretty good. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. In fact, I don't want you to. Don't you dare come over here. Don't you dare. What? You want to show everybody your lipstick? I specifically told you not to. How dare you? <laughs> Don't show everybody your beautiful lipstick. They'll go crazy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's called reverse pissachology. Yes. Bunny! Yes. I want to talk about us. I want to talk about you, uh, Bunford, Williamsburg, and me, uh, Malin, slash Reverend Steve. I, I feel that there's a big pressure since we're doing the show every other week. I sometimes feel that there's a pressure that we have to t we have to open up the show talking about the news and current events and the big things that are happening. But every once in a while, I'll realize, oh, wait, this is our show. We can do whatever the hell we want. So uh, let's talk about you and me. How many years have we known each other? Like 11 years, 12 years? We've known each other yeah, for uh, since, well, longer than does, that. Like MySpace and shit like that really count? I don't. I don't think so. Like we were Facebook friends on on Facebook for a while, but like we didn't really know each other. And well, we you didn't know each other really until we started the podcast. Yes, but like online, we knew each other. For years you had read my blog when i was still in california that was like okay so if we want to go there that would be roughly around 20 uh 2007 wow so like when like i was 14, sitting at 15 work years and i was bored we got slow we weren't getting calls so i started googling some things and i came across the church of ed wood and i was like this is fucking interesting Okay. Read Incredible. the whole thing. Read the whole thing through. Mm -hmm. Became a Woodian. Then started following your blog. Incredible, incredible. So we've known each other for for a a good amount of time. You basically read my blog from start to finish, and Jesus, my freaking blog. Yes, I used to be. Just one hundred percent honest on that damn blog. It was one hundred thousand percent my ugly, unfiltered life as a twenty-year-old and a thirty-year-old, and now as a yeah. forty-something parent of five. That whole blog is just the most cringe thing that I've ever done. <laughs> I have a detailed record of how much I was an asshole when I was younger, and I know that I have a habit of making everything about the show i think you should leave with tim robinson the greatest tv show of all time and i apologize for that but i was a real piece of shit though used to be i said was i'm not anymore people can change you changed eleanor 
wow, in the six years you've been alive, you've really changed. You yeah. really changed. Because how? You used to not wear makeup. Yeah, now you wear makeup. Big change. People can change. Hey, Eleanor, same. I used to not wear makeup, and now I do. People can change. Yeah. The more you know. Do, 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 do. Uh, at the end of 2014, you came to me with an idea for a film podcast. That you had come up with a pretty easy simple way to record a podcast uh and you you talked to me over the phone about doing a podcast together and that was the first time we had ever spoken together so if i'm not mistaken our first episode of the podcast in 2014 was only like the second time we have ever spoken to each other uh about that and it's funny because when we were opening the show, I was actually thinking of that as well, hmm. because, like, because right from the very opening, like, we talk a whole hell of a lot about literally what we were going to do, except that we were going to be talking about the giant claw. So yeah. when we actually started, it was like, oh, fuck, I need to do some kind of introduction. Mm -hmm. And I did, welcome to the book on I'm Bunny Williams, and with me is. And when I did that for the very first time, there was a lot of dread that you would not know what I just did and be able to pick up. But thank God you did. Yay! <laughs> That's great. That's great. Now here we are doing episode 435. Meaning, in a very literal and real sense, there have been 434 episodes leading right up to this one, 100% correct. The math checks out. Don't question it. Yes. Why would you? This is episode 435, so there must be 434 episodes before this one. That's just common sense and math. Don't question it. Don't question it. Ah, so uh, I just had to explain that to Natasha. That's uh, hilarious. Um, but I appreciate you, Bunny. I appreciate you very much. We've known each other for like 15 years. We've been doing this podcast since 2014. This is episode 435. I, 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 I appreciate you so much, Bunny. This show is well. is just a, a bunch of fun, and I wanted to 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 start this episode just talking about you and about us because uh, this Monday will be my sixth week on um, estrogen and a testosterone yes. blocker. You need to tell that, me all about that. Yes, that is known as HRT or hormone rep placement therapy for those of you not in the know so i have a pill that i take once a day pretty huge and it blocks my uh testosterone and then i have the pill that uh fills me with estrogen and right now i'm on the lowest dose is it and i flavored no yes no but it is it is a tiny little blue pill okay. and uh so so that's pretty good uh yeah, it's mother's little helper. And uh so it's been it it's it's you know one day shy of 6 weeks and I never thought I'd get here. I have recently talked to my cuz I have a doctor and then I have a doctor uh I have like my gender doctor and I have recently talked on the phone with my gender doctor, and my gender doctor says that uh, everything looks good, and she expects that in our after our next meeting, which is in September, she'll raise my dosage. So I'll be getting uh, stronger doses of both my estrogen and my oh. testosterone blocker, and so that's good. Right now, I'm on the earliest dose, but uh, yeah, things have been 
things have been good. It's difficult explaining to people because a lot of people go, oh, so how is it? How do you feel? And, you know, you said it. All of the things that my uh, HRT is giving me could easily just be I'm in my 40s. Okay. You know? So I've been really sore. My legs have hurt. My knees aren't the best. Uh, I'm, I get very tired in the middle of the day and want to just take a nap forever. I am very moody and um, I, not, not moody, but I'm very emotional. Very yeah. emotional. It, it's pretty easy to make me cry. And uh, thankfully, I was worried that it was going to be I'm super high manic. I'm super depressed. I want to kill myself. I'm crying all the time. Most of my emotions are focused solely on my wife. That like before I started taking the hormones. Oh, you know, honey, I love you. I love you so much. You're the best. But now I'm on estrogen and it's just. I love you so much. I, I love you. And so that's been difficult. I'm very tender and emotional towards the people that I love and care about. What did you say? You, you started saying something I feel like? You feel like what? You're going through puberty again. I'm going through puberty again. I'm going through puberty too. Yeah. That... Going through a puberty as a female is always different. And you are expressing to the world just exactly how teenagers might kill themselves if they're so in love. Yeah, yeah, I can. F I, yeah, Romeo and I get that Romeo and Juliet thing right now because the, it, I'm happy that so far my mood swings have been primarily focused on you, you know, Thanks. on you. I was worried that I was just going to be super like happy giggling and laying on the floor crying just 20 times a day. But no, it's all just. All of my emotions right now are just focused on you and how much I love you and how great you are. Big burden for me, but I'll do it for you. It's big bird for you? I didn't want you to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... so all, it, all of her emotions on big bird? No, she said, she said it's a big burden for me. Oh, but I oh, okay. misheard her. I was just... I was taking a piss. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's been me. Oh, another, I, I want to eat constantly. So then I started getting anxious about that because I just want to eat 24 seven. So I said, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start doing walks and jogs and getting healthy and, and going outside and, and doing laps and feeling really good about myself. And I started doing like, Hey, I did two miles of walking and jogging today. Hey, I did four miles. Hey, I did almost six and a half miles. Hey, I fractured my knee because I always overdo it. Now that I'm thinking about it, that really is tied to the to the estrogen because I, I want to eat 24-7. It's like a god. It, I'm like a food vampire Here's now. The thing. I don't know if it is tied to the estrogen because I would like to reference you back to California when we had a membership to California Family Fitness. California and Family you Fitness. It and had to have x rays done of your chest and your ribs because you strained That's your ribs. That's right. I sprained my ribs because I was working out too much. You have a habit of doing this regardless do. of your gender. But this time I was specifically doing it because of but you can the do estrogen. It without overdo. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's that's, that's what I'm. A that's you thing, yeah, not a gender or estrogen thing. Yeah, but so so yeah, we got a a YMCA membership recently, and that's been great. We have it, it, there's a, a like an Olympic sized lap pool, and it's then a. Thought they were much bigger than that. No, really? Yeah. Wow, I know nothing. And then there's a, a lazy river and a water slide and a jacuzzi that's hardly hot. And there's what? 
slide. Yeah, and there's a water slide. Dinosaur. Oh, yes, and then the dinosaur water slide, the area for the kids. Yeah, I forgot about that. The with the buckets, water. yeah, and, and fountains. And so we've been going to that a lot. That's been fun. Okay. That's it been has, fun. It has been fun. It's going to be awesome. Somebody does want to go there 24-7, and that's uh, that's a bit difficult. Yeah. Closed because they had a swim meet and Eleanor asked me mom can we go to the Y I said why so we can go swimming okay but you can't go swimming the pool's closed show me prove it to me I'm like excuse you <laughs> like, that's I didn't know she is. said that that's funny yeah. <laughs> prove it to me I need proof so uh what was I saying so yeah so that's been me and my uh, estrogen. It's been great. And I feel good. My wife says that that my face has slowly been changing. My face is the I it thought, has. I thought like in one picture and like one picture you sent up today. I, 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 I thought. Some of your facial features had looked. More feminine. But just yeah. the one. So like I. Okay, weird angle. What I don't know. Yeah, every every once in a while I'll get like a really good picture of myself. It, it my cheeks are are getting a bit more sunken in. Yeah, and I like that. And my face is a lot smoother. It hasn't stopped my facial hair from growing, but it is growing a lot softer. And and uh, shaving it is less of a pain, so that's good. And my yeah, baby definitely needs to wax again. Oh, we need to wax Jesus again. Christ! And we then, need, I, and then, to be tied down and waxed. That was the worst. And then I got, uh, I it, Natasha ordered me some Nair hair remover, specifically made for the face. And I tried some of that, and I'm like, oh, hey, you, I just have to put this on and wait ten minutes, and then you know, uh, dab it off with a wet cloth, and there you go. All the hair will be gone. Well, apparently it doesn't work for me. All it does is burn my face. Nice. Yay! Yay! Didn't get that That's on why video. you're always supposed to do the skin patch test. I guess. I didn't do the skin patch test first. I should have done that, but... uh. So, yeah, so I'm very sad and happy and confident and depressed, and that can all happen in one afternoon. And I'm just feeling feeling very emotional. And then on top of that, without getting into too, too much details, I've had a crazy-ass year. Yes, you have. Holy shit. I was at my absolute lowest point in the beginning of this year, but seriously, look at me now. I've lost almost 40 pounds. Yeah. Since December, I'm on estrogen and a testosterone blocker. My relationship with my wife is as strong as ever. We just had a date night last night. That was really fun. I'm a proud trans woman, and I'm trying to be out in the open about that because there's a lot of people. One one thing that I, I didn't realize until I came out as a trans person is that uh, there are more people than you would imagine that are in the closet and can't come out are scared to come out or worried to come out or can't come out for one reason or another and i hear from so many of them who sort of uh are out vicariously through other people including me and and i'm, I'm just trying to be really out and open about you know being a trans woman during this political climate yeah. because I am in a unique position where I'm not going to lose my job. I'm my parents aren't going to stop talking to me. They already stopped talking to me when I was a dude. So uh, nothing's going to change now that I'm growing boobs. Uh, I'm not going to lose my wife. I'm not going to lose my kids. So it's like, then why why not why not just be out in the open about being a trans woman and and let people know about like, hey, this is how I got. On estrogen, this is what it's like to go to the movies. This is what it's like. And and I, I've been really proud of myself and proud of how far I've come this in less than a year. And I'm I'm feeling very nostalgic right now, probably because I, I have so much uh, 
estrogen running through my body right now, but yeah. uh, I, I've been very nostalgic about about my life and my road, how I've my road to here, and I just wanted to 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 make sure that that you know that I love and appreciate you so much, buddy. Thank you. And this show is I love it. And it's great, and uh, I can't believe that the summer we spent watching movies on IMDb's bottom 100 was more fun than these COVID exploitation films. Yes, this but is, this, is this, a, is, this is a this is a worse some rough ass summer. Summers. Yeah. Yes, I. What'd you say? Yes. Eleanor just informed me that it may all die together because we're all getting older. Eleanor thinks we're all going to die together because we're all getting older? She said we may die. We may die together together. because we're all getting older. And then named off every individual in the house and said, you're getting older, Mal's getting older, I'm getting older, Max is getting super older. I'm actually getting younger and hotter now Um, that I'm on estrogen, which is... I'm just, you know, we're all going to die together. Because Eleanor doesn't understand age. Yes. Agreed. At, at six years old, it's difficult to... Uh... Yeah. But this has been a difficult summer. Yeah. This has been yeah. a difficult one. I I miss Saw. <laughs> True, yes. We had... We... we had more fun with Saw. <sighs> oh, man. The great taste of Coca Cola. Drink Coke, you fucks. That's a. They wanted us to say that as yes. part of the sponsorship. I didn't want to say that, but they wanted me to say that. So whatever. Drink Coke, you fucks. Uh. But I'd rather do the summer of COVID exploitation than have to finally uh, watch all of the damn Fast and the Furious movies. Gonna happen sooner or later. I know it's going to happen sooner or later. I know it's going to happen sooner or later, but I'm happy that we haven't done it yet. I don't want to watch those freaking movies at all. You've just known me for a very long time, and you know me very well, and we've been through a lot, and I wanted to just have like a Bunny and Steve uh, appreciation opening. So, So no news segment, no Vince McMahon bashing, although that is really fun right now. Yes. Uh, Vince McMahon is out as the CEO, and uh, Stephanie McMahon is now the co-CEO, along with the vice president, Nick Khan, who who has, or is it Tony Khan? It's one of the cons. Ten minute warning. Ten minute warning. Uh, and they made Triple H now the person in charge of creative, which means that a 76-year-old billionaire with numerous sexual harassment allegations is no longer writing the show. Which means it can only get better. Yes. It can only get better now that Vince McMahon isn't literally writing every second of the WWE. Um, Why does she have to be a co CEO? Why can't she? I don't know that. I don't know. Because she's a girl. Because she has excellent question. And some titties. Fuck that. Yeah. I've been wondering that myself. Uh,. No ranting and raving about how Republicans are destroying this country in the opening, which they are. And the stupid shit that the Republicans do. Uh, Small aside, uh, the vice president had a meeting with uh, disability advocates, a number of which were blind. And so she started a a meeting saying who she was and her pronouns and (laughs) describing her suit and Republicans being Republicans. I can't believe our idiotic vice president. Why would she have to describe her suit? She's talking to fucking deaf people. Blind, blind. Fucking blind, blind people, blind. You, you fucks. Like, damn. Fuck about people with disabilities. They don't. They don't care. Disabilities that have to be accommodated. And they have the money from all their fucking bullshit. Yeah. That they can uh, get private personal care to do. Fucking ridiculous. Does everybody have that access to money? Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. 
But basically, this is a Bunny and Steve appreciation opening. I really appreciate you, Bunny, and I love doing this podcast with you. And if I didn't love the podcast, then I wouldn't be doing it anymore. Yes. Just period. But it's a whole lot of fun. And FYI, this has been a very sappy opening Act One monologue. And, and we've we, been, and we've been through a lot together. We have been. We've been, we've been through a, a lot, lot together. We've been through current obvious changes. Yes. And and a lot of things post Christmas. Yes. We we behind have, the scenes. We have been through homelessness together. Mm-hmm. We have been through mental breakdowns together. And yeah. births of children. Yeah. Births of children. Several births. Yeah. Just one. I don't know why I'm trying to moralize. But we did. No, that's all right. We've we've been through a lot of horrible things together. Brats, Slender Man, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2, 2008's Disaster Movie. Yes. Recep Evadik. Recep Evadik. Just saying that, we get like a bump of like a thousand listens. It's incredible. This is becoming a reset Eva Deke Stan podcast. <laughs> but this is a really sappy intro. Uh, we're going to be taking a short break in a little bit, and then we're going to move on to Steve's historic approximations, where we are going to be... I'm going to get really pissed off. Yeah, okay. We're going to be talking about the difficult... Uh, the difficult position that liberals find themselves in now where they kind of sort of have to defend the Walt Disney Corporation. <laughs> and that sucks. That really sucks. Having to defend this major corporation like they're not evil because the Republicans are convinced that they, they're eating babies. You know, so, but then the thing is, is that it, it, Republicans are out there saying, oh, Disney is groomers and they're uh, molesting children and eating children. And then the liberals are like, hey, calm down. Disney isn't doing that. And then, like, you eventually learn that in, like, 1945, Walt Disney made a cartoon called the joys of eating babies, and it's like, fuck, I'm trying to defend you! Yes. You're an no, evil I, corporation, I, and I'm having to defend you. I, I, I am in no mood to defend Disney. I really want to see Disney and Florida rip each other apart. So they are both just bloody masses. As long as Marvel movies survive. That's all I'm saying. And then I see, and then I see liberals. Oh well, if Ron DeSantis wants to uh, crack down on Disney, then Disney should just take their park and go somewhere else. Oh yeah, sure, just pack it all up in boxes. Just pack up the entirety of five theme parks, two water parks, and like thirty-five hotels in the back of a truck. Yes. Just drive it to another state. Easy as pie. Think, McFly. Think. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just get upset sometimes with liberals as much as I do with, with conservatives, but not in a Joe Rogan sort of of a uh, way. A lot of times when you when you hear someone say, "Oh, I hate liberals and conservatives," and it's like, okay, only conservatives say that. But it, it, it upsets me because I remember when Trump was president, you'd see these pictures of Trump in the Oval Office being held by Jesus. Yeah. And there's an American flag in the back. And he's, he's like glowing like he's a god. And all these liber liberals are like, oh, my God, this is horrible. And like half of those liberals are now showing pictures of the exact same thing with Biden. Although they they've got to do the Rambo Biden for me, those fucking I, pictures of Trump, 
I absolutely those are love. hilarious. Yeah, it's like the one I found the other day where he was where Trump was riding a bear. Like, I yeah. fucking love that shit. And if they want to, do oh yeah, the guy who's Biden, the guy who's scared of my stairs. The guy who's scared of stairs is going to be yeah. riding a giant angry bear. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, no. I I mean, I don't know if we're exactly talking liberals though, or if we're just talking fucking Democrats. And and it pisses yeah. me off because like this is exactly what I said was gonna happen. Uh-huh. Biden's gonna get into office and everybody's gonna go to sleep. There's documented evidence out there it and yep. here we go. All the shit that we're angry at Trump about, which is correct because he was a piece of fucking shit. Yes. Biden gets a pass on that. Yeah. Biden gets a pass on the same fucking shit. Nobody gives a fuck about brown kids in cages anymore. Nope. And nothing, nothing has changed with that. There has not been a policy change. There has not been an executive order. There has not yeah, been anything nothing. at all. Nothing. But Democrats, it's okay, but it's cool Democrats, now because Biden's doing it. Yeah, because Biden's doing it. Yeah. Phony motherfucker. No, no, no. I read a headline about him completing, approving funds to complete Trump's wall. Yeah, yeah. And they're having a heyday with that because. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, oh, he came to his senses, they're like, oh, no, see, Trump was right. Yeah. It's like, no, no. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So I appreciate you, Bunny. Thank I really you. appreciate I you. Appreciate Bunny you. and Steve. Bunny and May Lynn. Yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know I really appreciate you. Oh. <laughs> hmm. So, uh, so that's it for our monologue. We are going to be taking a short break because Zoom only does 45 minute meetings, but we will be right back with Steve's historic approximations. We're going to be talking about the Disney Corporation and one of the weirdest, most horrible things that they've ever done. Our sponsor this week is Coca Cola. Drink Coke, you shitheads. We didn't want to say that. They made us say that. Yes. We had to. It's the copy right here. I got the paper right here. It's what they said. So uh, be sure and g- stay tuned because we will be right back with some more fun. It's going to cut off in five, four, three. 